Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show where the Teach Better team gets to join you live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. I am so glad that it's Wednesday and I know normally we have a guest, but why bother? Katie Miglin's in the house because it we just needed it. We needed the energy. We needed the Katie time. All good things. I am about halfway through my cup of coffee, my spotted cup of coffee. So we'll be right back. Do you have a, wait, wait, wait. Do you have a heart on your coffee cup? Oh, it's so cute. We'll be back. everyone. Good morning. Katie Miglin is here with us with the most adorable coffee mug ever. Hi, Katie. How are you doing? Hi. Good morning, Ray. Happy like hump day. Awake? Yeah, happy hump day. Are you awake? Are you sleepy? I'm good. I'm good. You know, sun shining-ish. It's getting there. I'll, I'll take it. That's fine. I have a Teach Better uh, I... swag crew neck on and I am obsessed but i have a very strange question for the community so before i get to that question can we talk about this crew neck sweatshirt here's a here's the thing people i know anyone who follows rose ray should know at this point in her life she doesn't wear a lot of colors it's shades of black shades of brown and white and i don't know if anyone noticed last couple weeks ago was that last that last week the week before she had a Crew neck sweatshirt, which I support the crew neck sweatshirt. Crew neck sweatshirt, but giant smiley face, it's colored. Now she's wearing wearing that. All I want to know is help, help. Who is this person? Here's my explanation. First off, anxiety medication has helped me wear color. Second of all, I got my hair colored, so it's like the color of like this. For those of you who are listening to the Teach Bear Talk podcast, I'll describe it for you. My hair color is like a beautiful Hershey bar. It's like brown and pretty. And so now I feel like I can just wear anything. I got, I'm, I'm rocking bandana. I'm rocking teach better vintage 2022 conference sweatshirt. I am, I am, I'm literally living my best life right now. It's the best. And I'm, I'm here for it. I'm hundred percent here for it. You're wearing black. So I feel like you took my shirt and I took yours. Mm -hmm. I did. I just want to be like you. Just kidding. No, I just am trying to be like you every single day. Hey, friends, I have a real serious question about clothing, and it's a Wednesday, which Ugh. I feel like is the day to ask awkward clothing questions because okay. it's hump day. It's already weird. So let's get into this. I personally, I like crew neck uh, sweatshirts. So for those of you yeah. who like can't picture it, just like there's no hood, right? It's just a, yep. a thicker, long shirt. Um yeah. What are the rules about wearing it backwards? Because the reason I'm asking is because technically it's just a, like, it's the same on both sides, except this sweatshirt has writing on the front and nothing on the back. But I wish if I had designed this sweatshirt, which PS I did with Joshua Stamper, but it's fine. I would have put the logo design on the back and had a blank front. So is it socially appropriate for me to wear this shirt, quote unquote, backwards, even though nobody would know? Doesn't it like the tag stitching? No, it doesn't. The tag, it, I pulled out already because I hate tags and there's no stitching. Like you can't see it from the, from the outside. I, okay. I can get behind this, except isn't there usually like something little, like a little logo logo? When graphic on the back, some, something on the front? I don't know. I mean, I guess in some some way, shape, or form. I just have a lot of crew neck hoodies. I have too many. I will admit I have too many crew necks. But I just don't always want the big graphic on the front. I want the big graphic on the back. I'm more of a back t-shirt like logo person. thing yeah, yeah. person than a front. You know what? Here's how we're going to solve this. Do it. And then... Okay. We'll see. We'll give you feedback. We'll be like, oh, no. Mm -mm. I will admit I was wearing it backwards up until we came on this recording, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and I literally been wearing it backwards ever since I got it on Thursday. So 
Nobody has noticed. Nobody said anything, but I will literally switch it around during the <laughs> during the commercial coming up and see if anybody notices because it's just white. So it it doesn't yeah. look weird. I don't know. You know, I'm all for for war Germans. I just want to know in the comments or do any of you have weird clothing things that you do and you're like, I don't care if this is socially appropriate. I like wearing two pairs of socks on one foot. You know? My like hands got, got sweaty at that comment. I have socks. And the idea of putting the idea of putting two on the same literally just makes my makes my like I can't. I'm trying yeah. to think of other weird things. Like I don't care if people know. Like I wear crew neck sweatshirts backwards. I wear some people are like some people are like sensory. So they're leggings or they don't like 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 tight shirts, kind of like things like touching yeah. them, that good thing. I just clean up I just cleaned up closet this weekend. So I'm I'm husband thinks that I'm gonna go shopping, but I'm not because we really don't need that many clothes. I mean, I mean there's only seven days in a week. I've kind of gone through that process, Katie. It's weird that you bring things up, even though we don't like live together, that we're having the same conversations over the same course time course of time because I've been looking at, I don't need, for example, the, the crew neck sweatshirts. I don't need 12 of them. Like maybe you, one but, of, okay. no, I'm I saying maybe disagree. one of every color. Like I have a white one, a yeah. brown one, yeah. a gray one, a black one, a navy one. But I have like two navy crew neck sweatshirts that like, there's almost no difference. Why do I need both? I did rid of a lot of my like hoodie hoodies because hoodies in theory, right? They're like you can you can cozy, they feel cozier, but every time I feel like I just get sick of the hood. Yeah. And so I never want to wear them. And I'm like, why do I keep holding on to these for like the off chance that I chance that I might get interested? I, I I can understand that. Although crew necks, I feel like I feel like you can have nicer crew necks that like oh, like, oh, I'm willing to leave the house in this. And then I'm going to sit on the couch and just watch a movie crew neck. And so if you have two of the same color, but they serve different purposes, then I think it's, I think it's okay to have. I don't know. I think I have an excessive amount of jeans. There's so many things. Anyway, Mm. let us know your weird thing. This is good. Wacky Wednesday edition. Uh, I'm going to switch around my crew neck and we're going to get into some conversation this morning. (laughs) We'll be back. to the Teach Better Today morning show where the Teach Better team gets to join you live every single morning and we get to change our outfits mid-commercial. Katie, hold on. I got to get my handkerchief all. What do you think? It just looks like a big crew neck. You would have never known. You're you're right. Here's what I was really kind of hoping is I was hoping there was going to be some sort of malfunction and you were going to get stuck as it came back on with like one arm half in and the other arm, the other arm, like, out and be like, oh, like, oh, hey guys, my shirt's normal. It's fine, fine. But you did that flawlessly. And now I'm wondering, now I'm wondering how many times have you done that? And I've never noticed. A lot of times. I've done this a lot of times. I will say Katie's <laughs> mic, anybody else noticing that Katie's mic is like on the fritz and... Katie, you gotta you gotta get it together. You you're you live on camera now that you're back. You can't have this like janky microphone. Can thing. you hear me now? Yeah, you just keep repeating yourself. Like you start a <laughs> sentence and you're like, I think, I think, and I don't think you said it twice. <laughs> just emphasizing the point. See, it just happened again. I'm just emphasizing the point. Oint. <laughs> Either way. Right. We know that Katie's mic is just warming up because she's been gone for the last three months. So your microphone and internet are probably like, hold up, you're working again full time. Get me out of here. I think if you brought baby Hazel onto the screen, everything would would fix itself. So that's coming soon. Katie, the one thing I want to focus on is we got a listener question that was 
really vague, but in a good way. I want to kind of have some good reflection on this. The listener question was, what was the most interesting thing you've learned so far this week? And as I was looking at the listener question, I was like, oh, we could answer that. That would be that would be kind of fun to be able to do. Maybe highlight some of the projects that you and I are working on for the Teach Better team. But mm-hmm. also, I would love to challenge our community here on a Wednesday morning to celebrate that you have learned something this week, even though it doesn't, even though it may not come directly to mind. Um, there is something you've learned about your curriculum, your teaching style, your students. Mm-hmm. There's something you learned. And can we celebrate that and and bring it more to the forefront of, of a moment to celebrate on this Wednesday? So Katie, we're going to start with you. I know that this might be tricky, but what is one thing that you've learned recently that we can celebrate? Oh man. Oh my gosh. I feel like there's so much like small things. I feel like you learn every day. Um, yes, I agree. Okay. I can share this kind of vulnerable thing. Sorry if my mic is still trash. No, you um, sound good now. So it's good for a vulnerable moment. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so we were going to do this. This was like actually a little bit ago, but we were going to do a family cooking challenge and we wanted to kind of, you know, beat the winter blues. And so my oldest had big aspirations, wanting to do all these cool things. I, you know, was trying to prep for her and our, our middle one was not having all the, the processes. And, um, the night of, you know, it was like the oven or the grill ran out of gas. They like, I asked somebody to keep an eye on my appetizer. Those burnt, like, it was just like constant small hiccups. And I was getting so frustrated because I just kept thinking if I would have just cooked dinner, this would have been fine. Like we could have just been like eating already. Food would have been fine. And I had to like pause. Cause I realized like all my frustrations, my oldest was watching and she was like, just, she was looking for the positive. So every time there's a hiccup, she would like laugh and we'd move on. And I was getting so like frustrated in the moment of like the silly things and kept thinking about like the, what if we would have done this differently. And afterwards I was like, my attitude totally impacted her like excitement around this because I was just like crabby about it. And it wasn't working as well as we had hoped. And I was like, I, need to just focus on like what was going well versus like the hiccups. And I think it was one of those moments where I was like, you know, my kids are old enough now where they're starting to see and they kind of react. And so I, it was just kind of eye opening to be like, there was a whole lot of positive that came out of this event and I should have focused on that rather than getting frustrated. So it it was something I probably will learn again and again and again, and it'll probably, you know, it's something that we've all faced, but it was like totally a good reminder moment for, you know, something that could have been really, really fun. I didn't need to get so frustrated. But and a good reminder for Wednesday, because as things Mm -hmm. kind of don't go right in in your week or in a certain class hour, just kind of rolling with the positives. There's so many positives that as educators, we forget to highlight. And so many of us will have a great day. One thing will go wrong and that's what we take home with us. So I think you're highlighting just a great reminder for, you know, the beginning of February in general. Yeah, exactly. Right. Because it can be a tough time of year for sure. What about you, Ray Hugh? What did you learn this week? Um, okay, so I think I've mentioned it. I know I mentioned it on the show recently, but I'm reading a book right now that's called The Daily Laws. And I think I'm gonna note that the thing I'm learning and have learned is that sometimes simple, short, and sweet is best. Um, this book I'm really liking, it has like a 30 second read every day and then like a quick recap sentence or two. And I think I like that format. I like the value add the story moment, but then it's super short and it Mm -hmm. doesn't, it doesn't pull concepts to be any harder or, or, you know, any harder than they need to be. It's kind of like, here's the concept. Here's what you should take away. Now go live your life. And so Mm -hmm. I'm starting to apply that now to a little piece of work I'm working on that I I had, I'm working on like a book that I don't know if it will end up being like a free download on our website or if it'll go get published. I don't really know what I want to do with it. I could break it up into blogs. Um, Anyway, I'm just working on a writing piece. And originally I had these really long chapters. Like every chapter was going to have major sections. I was going to include two or three stories. I was going to just get all this stuff. And then at the end, it was going to have these really big action steps. Like if the, for those of you who read uh, teachers deserve it kind of like that, where at the end of the chapter, there's like 
three to five things you should Mm -hmm. go do right now. And it's not that that wouldn't have been good, but I kind of deleted half the book this recently and was like, no, I just want it to be short and sweet. I want you to have a concept, you know, read a story, maybe a reflection and then one action step, just one. And then let's move on to the next chapter. Like let's, let's have it be like quick and tidy, I guess. So that's going to be my, my takeaway right now is I'm really learning Mm -hmm. to simplify. Simplify, I think is good. You know me, I'm always a big fan of short and sweet. I feel like that's anytime we do anything on the team, I'm always like, there's too much text. I don't want to read this. (laughs) Yes. And it's interesting because I think as a writer or a creator, even like teachers when they lesson plan, like we think more is more and sometimes it's right. But other times you're like, no, if I make this really simple, the directions don't have to be challenging. Right. Then this will be executed easier. Or like, do they have to actually cut out those 22 pieces of puzzles or like, could we just draw it? Or I don't know. I just feel like sometimes we make things really complicated and it's not always needed. So agree. Agree. I like that. That's a good tip. So -hmm. so we want to challenge all of you for our listener question. I know that they sent it in to our team, but I'd love to have all of you reflect on what's the most interesting thing you've learned just within the last few days. What's, what's something that you can take away? Maybe it's an Mm -hmm. interesting fact that you learned while you were scrolling through TikTok or Instagram. Maybe it's a life lesson, like one of ours. Maybe it's something about a student that you just learned something new, even though it's February and they've been in your class since the beginning. Just give us a little, give us a little hint. We'd love to see it in the comments and big celebration for the things we're learning every single day. Katie, your mic got so much better when you started being serious and reflective. This is just, Oh, maybe that's what it needed to be. It needed just me to get on task. That was, that was it. Now that you're on task, we're going to have a great Wednesday ahead. We hope you all have a wonderful day and keep us updated if you need anything, but we hope you have the best Wednesday hump day of all time. Bye guys. Yeah. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. (laughs) The comments are always so entertaining. (laughs) We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.